Hi, my name is Maria and welcome to my channel MH Books. And today we're going to film a very quick Friday reads before I go to work. My hair isn't quite dried, but it's I miss last week's Friday reads because I'm now working in my old job as well as my new job because it's extremely busy season. So I'm extremely busy in both. And I have my dad in the hospital and I have, we had my birthday, my sister's birthday, we had a load of stuff going on. Um, so if I don't film this now before work, I am working in two jobs today again, so it's not going to get filmed. So let's, that's my long introduction to, let's be quick. Um, so to go through what I read in the last week or so, we're just like going in random order, depending on where I find it. Um, night film. Night film was great fun. I started listening to this in, um, or on audio. Um, I do recommend an audio, but then I, I said I'd pick up a copy because it, um, but yeah, I didn't know about this. This is extracts in the copy. You can see the horror genre here. Um, I thought I'd pick up a copy because it's good and I like to read things in both formats when they're good. Um, and then I realised that this had, that that this has multiple formats within the copy. So it's websites and emails and things. So the premise of the story is we have an investigator, a uh, journal journalistic investigator, um, Scott McGrath. It's pronounced McGrath in America, but McGrath is actually the correct pronunciation of Mac that last name, by the way. Oh, mean. <laughs> <laughs> but McGrath, he is American, um, though his ancestors still pronounced it McGrath. Um, and he's investigating the death of Ashley Cordova, who committed suicide, and is the famous daughter, 23 or 24 year old daughter, of a horror film um, director and producer called Cordova, simply Cordova. No one's ever seen Cordova. His films are so bleeding scary that they became illegal and were never, sh not illegal, but just never shown in, in um, after a certain point, were never shown in public theatres. So they go underground. So to see a of a film, you have to know secret signs and meet and see them. So it, he built up a massive, the, the ultimate fan, cult fan base. Um, and this is, um, Scott McGrath um, investigating the, the death of Ashley and because her father is a horror producer there's this whole question all the time of is there supernatural reasons why she committed suicide is there not um, Scott has joined with two others in the investigation I won't give away you'll find out pretty soon early on but it's, just, it's still kind of like oh okay um, so I don't want to miss to spoil the oh okay, um, it blends reality with fiction in the fictional world. So is is this you know I mean like the actual plot of this would read like a Cordova movie, and that's the point. So it goes all into this. So if you're sort of into um, uh, the noir, more noir writers. What's his name from Alfred Hitchcock or something like that. Um, but much darker version of Alpha Hitchcock, you're probably going to enjoy this book. It was so much fun. Um, I really liked it and I'm so going to read it now properly. Not properly, but in the, the, the hardback format to get this format as well. Um, the, the audiobook is very good and I think there's even an app that goes with it and, and as well. So you can actually use an app at the same time as reading the book. So again, oh, so experience it again. Can't wait. Um, the book that I finished for Middle East is a readathon, which I carried over a little bit, um, was, and again, I'm never going to pronounce her name, and she talks about her character, this is semi-autobiographical, it's Deuce Oriental, yes honey, I know, I know, it's the daytime, it's morning, yes, okay, they haven't got their seed yet, um, uh, it's Neja Devajidis, so I'm really not going to pronounce it. She talks about it's semi autobiographical. She talks about how nobody can pronounce her name of her character in the book as well. Um, and that Western tongues just can't pronounce it. So, <laughs> oh, 
that isn't really an excuse, but I have just have no way of finding out how to pronounce this name because anything that's out there is in French because it's translated work from French as well. Um, and I can't speak French either, so even the French I assume is the wrong pronunciation of her name. Um, if you enjoyed this, which is Persephilis, which has to go back to the library, um, you're probably going to like this. And I do actually recommend reading Persephilis first because if this is based in Iranian history in Iran. Um, just before and just after the um, Iran-Iraq war and if you're not familiar with the history you have to work out this history as well as the complicated family. Now if you're reading this book and I really do recommend this book. I didn't find this until I came to the end. She has cheat notes at the back on her family. Okay. <laughs> or on the family characters in it. So there's the cheat notes. I recommend you use the cheat notes and this book because her family is her family is quite complicated. Her um the Iran Iraq Iran Iranian history is um quite complicated as well. So it does it does help. <laughs> um it's set on two timelines. There's one where she's in a fertility clinic in Paris, somewhere in France anyway and she's thinking about what's happening there at the moment then she's reflecting back on her family story and the family story she doesn't take linearly she she says i am fast forwarding you into the future i'm bringing you back to the past so she's not bringing her memories in, but she's telling you where she is at all times but she's bringing it back and forth and left right and center um while well, mentioning all the history iranian history we're mentioning all the the, the different people um you know and you know, when you're talking about there's, there's, yes, I know, you poor budgie. Oh my God, that budgie has been, oh, they neglected. I haven't given them seed yet. It's like quarter to seven in the morning and they haven't been given seed. So please don't run the ISBCC. I'm sure they'll get seed after this. Um, for the, this time period is in, 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 in Iran is a period that um, most people misunderstand and it is meant for a big um, family saga such as this and it is a big family saga um, that I highly recommend. Um, I said it wasn't going to take too long and it is a Friday read. It's not a review. It don't, not shouldn't be under as much pressure but I am a little bit under pressure because I think this is just pushed out. This book is just pushed out. Freshwater as my um, favorite book, and that's Car this year. Um, it's a favorite book this year. So it's Carmen Marcus's How Saints Die. Um, if you like, just why I have this one out as well. If you liked The Clay Girl by Heather Tucker, that was a bit, a bit more famous if, um, a couple of years ago because Mercedes and Mercy's Bookish Readings had read this. Um, you're going to like this one. Um, it's the most similar bit I can find. Carmen Marcus is a poet by trade. So this is extremely poetical in language. It is definitely sitting in the literary fiction. So by the way, literary fictions and narrative, bloody fun fiction. Okay. Um, I decided I was going to do that because I do, I never make distinguish and, and I know people have definite tastes for both. Um, and it'd be a bit of a shock to the system to get a non-literary if you're expecting a literary in the other way around. So, um, How Saints Die though, I, I want more people to read this. Um, it's about a little girl, Ellie, and her dad, Peter the Fisherman, and her Irish mammy. Now they live in England, so the Irish mammy is important. It's set in the 1980s. In the 1980s, the IRA were still putting bombs and stuff in London. So Irish people are not always, from the 1950s to the 1980s, not always the most liked nation within England. Um, and that's important to the story too. But the most important thing is um, Ellie's dad, is a fisherman, has brought her up on stories about um, myths of the sea. And he's told her that he cut her out of the net, um, which is a story based on the truth. Um, her mammy is an is an Irish Catholic mammy, whose whose nana whose 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 own mother has has never met Ellie, 
but I sent her a book on saints, which includes how saints die. And you know, if you're a Catholic martyr saint, you die, you know, by stoning and on the wheel and by fire. So some pretty melodramatic deaths. And I sent her a red blanket. And so she's brought up on the stories of all this. And her mother is goes goes is into the semi-pagan Catholic traditions that I would have known of, known of too where um, you invite the dead people because um, Ellie's granny or her mammy's mammy has just died and you invite the dead people in on Halloween by lighting candles and by setting food for them. Um, so Ellie is brought up in all this myth and tradition so she understands her, her world through stories and she explains everything through stories and she gets in so much trouble with adults because she keeps explaining what's happening by telling them a story, a fictionalised story, which is based on the truth. Um, she even gets in trouble with the kids. When I went to see, it reminds me of, the, of when I went to see Room, which is Emma Donoghue's room in a the theatre. Um, I went with to somebody called Paul who'd never see, read the book or seen the movie before. And he went, he went after the, 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 the play had ended, he went basically then like, um, Adults are shitheads to the kids. Yeah, that's about right. And that's basically the theme of this book too. The adults are shitheads to the kid. Um, it's told in poetic language. Um, and she is a poet. So I'll say, I just marked, say even, so this is the way that Ellie thinks. So uh, much in the way that in The Clay Girl, um, the child is thinking in poetic language. This is the way that Ellie thinks. So the girls' toilets are quite dark. They smell of old wood and damp coats, and the lights are dim and fizzy, so she can just make out the dirt in her face. She turns the grey streak soap over and over in her hands, trying to make a foam. She rubs the foam into her sore skin, working it into her hairline, where she feels tiny flecks of gravel. Then she rinses, then she does it again. She does not want them to see the dirt, not any trace. Ear, look at the dirt, smelly, smelly, elly, smelly, elly. Her hair is all wet and unraveling from the plaits. Her cheeks pink. She smiles. Practice. Was it a fight if she didn't fight back? She looks again in the mirror and she isn't the same. Something has been rubbed out and she is more real. And that's what it's about. Something's been more rubbed out and she's more real. Um, highly recommend this. If you need to read a book that's based on myths and legend for a, um, for a readathon, or you need a book based on a child, um, um, read this. It's not necessarily going to have a happy ending. It's not necessarily going to have a sad ending either. Um, you have to go with it. All right, so where are we going to go with the next bit of the reading? Where is my books? <laughs> Sorry, they, I went on a bookshop that's too busy. Um, Stephen King this week, this week, this month's reading is Cycle of the Werewolf. I'm so busy in work and personal life. I didn't know I would order three copies. I had three copies of this book and they gave it to me. They went, oh, are you doing a reading club? And I went, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I'm doing a reading club. I just didn't notice that it ordered three accidentally. So I had three copies of Cycle of the Werewolf from the library, which is a graphic, not a graphic, it's actually more of an illustrated story by um, Stephen King and the, the illustrations are Bernie Wrightson. Um, and it's done every month. I've read it before. Um, I just can't get my hand on the copy because it's not in print anymore. Um, so there's stories there. And I actually think I've shown on the channel before. The other one that I'm halfway through is uh, one of Femi at Zoe Rex favourites this year. Um, or her series this year. Um, and I had to get them in mass make it paperback and there's still paperback is so small compared to a normal paperback it's the only way to get it um so I'm halfway through written in red and that is just exactly what the doctor ordered um serpent fantasy um a great world I go into a little bit more later on I'm trying to keep this under 15 minutes and it's only just barely so that's me wrapping up on this Friday I do hope to be able to film sometime this weekend but life is crazy so Meanwhile, I hope whatever you're reading, you're really enjoying it and that you all have a lovely weekend. Bye now.